Hi there, welcome to this week's Weekly Wiggle. My name is Yvonne and I'm one of the physios here on the physio team in Vincent's. Today I'm going to come on and talk to you about incontinence and pelvic health as opposed to exercise. So in case you're not familiar about some of the terms that I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to explain them in some really t simple terms. Continence is the ability to hold on to your urine and feces until an appropriate time for you to go to the toilet. So therefore incontinence is the inability to hold on to your urine and feces and it's the involuntary loss of control of your bladder and bowel. Incontinence can occur when your pelvic floor, which is the slinger muscles that runs from back to the front to support your bladder and bowel, when they don't work properly in the way that they generally should. Incontinence is a very common symptom in people who don't have CF, so in the general population. It's been found that in women in the general population, between 8 and 11% of people report incontinence, and in men it's between 1 and 7%. In people with CF, however, it seems to be a little bit more of an issue. Up to 68% of women report incontinence and up to 11% of men. So as you can see, incontinence can be a bit of an issue in people with CF. So I'm gonna go through a few different types of incontinence and some of the symptoms you might recognize. The first type of incontinence is stress incontinence. So this happens when you exert yourself and the pressure from your tummy pushes down on your pelvic floor and you might leak. So for example, if you laugh, cough, sneeze or lift something. The second type of incontinence is urge incontinence. So this happens when you might get a sudden urge to go to the toilet, not necessarily with a full bladder. You also might make more frequent trips to the toilet. So norm, the normal amount of trips to the toilet in a day is between six and eight um, trips to the loo, whereas you might be going a little bit more than this. You can also have a nighttime waking to go to the toilet more than once. The third type of incontinence is mixed incontinence. So that's a mix between the, uh, the first type and the second type. So the mix between stress and urge incontinence. The last type of incontinence is functional incontinence. This happens when life and health situations means that you can't get to the toilet in time. So for example, if you are downstairs and your toilet is upstairs and you need to wear some oxygen to get up the stairs and you have to take time to put on your oxygen and you also can't rush up the stairs the way maybe somebody else can, you need to take your time because you're too breathless, it may mean that you leak before you get to the toilet. Another situation this might happen in is if you're on laxatives because you're constipated and the action of the laxatives kicks in very, very quickly and you just can't make it to the toilet. There are some things that might make you a little bit more prone to experiencing incontinence and I'm going to go through those now. So you might have a weak pelvic floor. It may be because that you're not very active or because your posture isn't great and the muscles can't work properly. You might also have an overactive pelvic floor, so everything is a little bit too tight and switched on all the time. You might have trouble using tampons or with intercourse. With chronic cough, you might experiencing, experience some leaking. If you're constipated a lot of the time, that can then put pressure on the bladder and the pelvic floor and it just can't work the way that it should. If you're pregnant, have been pregnant or any type of childbirth, it can make you prone to leaking. And also, as you age and with the changing effect of hormones, it can make you more prone to incontinence. Some of the triggers for being incontinent, they're different for everybody, but I'm going to suggest some now. If you have a strong laugh, cough or sneeze, or if you have a fit of coughing, and especially if you are having an exacerbation, that can make things worse. Some people find that they're more incontinent if they exercise, if they're lifting heavy weights or going for a run. Rushing to the toilet, if you do have a full bladder, some people can leak. If they can't get to the toilet in time, they think that the toilet is too far away, if they can't get their trousers undone. In this scenario, it's really important to remain calm, to slowly move towards the toilet, to slowly undo the button and the zip on your trousers, and most importantly, to remember to breathe. And some people just leak when they have a really, really good belly laugh. I suppose what's important is that you know your triggers and that you try and put into place some strategies to help prevent those leaks from happening. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, it's mainly women that suffer with incontinence and leaking, but it can also happen in men as well. 
No matter what gender you identify with, if you are experiencing any of the symptoms that I might have mentioned in this video, trouble controlling your bladder or bowel, it's really important that you mention this to a CF team member, someone that you feel comfortable talking to, and they'll refer you on to one of the physio team. We'll be able to talk to you about your symptoms, explore them a little bit more if you're happy to do so. A lot of symptoms of incontinence can be resolved with simple pelvic floor muscle strengthening exercises and strategies that one of us on the physio team can talk you through. Remember, symptoms of incontinence are quite common in the general population and more so in the CF community. It can be part of life with CF, but you don't have to put up with it just because you have CF. The CF team are more than happy to talk to you about any symptoms that you might be having with your pelvic floor, from incontinence to pelvic pain, and we have a range of treatment and management strategies to help you. We understand that you might feel embarrassed or shy to talk about these issues, but we are used to talking about the pelvic floor and sometimes how it doesn't work the way it should. So please talk to us. Send us an email at cfphysio at svuh.ie or grab one of us in outpatients and we can have a quick chat with you. Thanks for listening. We look forward to seeing you next week on the Weekly Wiggle.